the next report we will look into is the burn-up chart, which is sort of a reversed burn-down chart. Go to the report screen and select the burn-up chart. It looks very similar to the burn-down chart, doesn't it? Story points are on the vertical axis, the horizontal axis represent the sprint timeline, and there is a gray guideline across the whole timeline. However, in the burn-down chart, the gray guideline was trending down as time went by, and here in the burn-up chart, it is trending up. That is because this chart is showing progress by reflecting completed work, not remaining work, as the burn-down chart did. But to gauge how we are progressing, we need to have a final goal indicated somewhere in the chart. In the burn-down chart, that was easy. The objective is always to have zero remaining work, regardless of how big the sprint is. Here, we start from zero and try to reach the target, which is the sum of points from all issues in the sprint. That is indicated by this red line here, representing a sprint scope. And notice that it is positioned at the same value where the burndown line was starting from, 12 points. The sum of points of all issues in the Scruffy Sprint. If the scope does not change, in other words, issues are not added or removed, the line will remain flat for the whole sprint. If issues are added, line will go up, and if they are removed, it will go down. But none of these lines are affected by the completion of the work. So how do we know if we are trending well based on these two lines? The answer is we don't, and we need another line included to represent completed work. That is why the green line representing the completed scope has been added. It starts from zero and then it grows, ideally eventually reaching the full scope. You can click on each event point to open up a pop-up with more details on <coughs> what change happened here. There are a couple of other similarities to the burndown chart report. Sprint selector dropdown is located here at the top left corner. The selector for units to express the effort is also at the same spot. And underneath the diagram is the list of all scope changes that happened in the sprint. Let's bring side by side burn up and burn down charts for Scruffy Sprint. You can easily tell how they horizontally mirror each other. All events are aligned, and the only difference is that when the green line in the burn up chart goes up, the red line in the burn down chart goes down. But again, this is not a real sprint, and some things are a bit too perfect. In this case, there were no changes to the sprint scope. Nothing was added to the sprint, and nothing was removed. If we bring side-by-side burn-up and burn-down charts for sprint 1 from our actual project, lines do not mirror each other, as well as they did for Scruffy Sprint. The reason for this is that our real sprint had some changes in its scope, and burn-down and burn-up charts handle scope changes differently. Having another look into the burn-down chart, we can notice that the red line represents both scope and progress. When issues are added to the sprint, the red line goes up, and when they are removed or completed, it goes down. This is not the case in the burn-up chart. Green line represents only the completed work, the progress, and it does not describe sprint scope at all. The scope is represented by the red line here, so when issues are added or removed, only red line is affected, and when work is completed, only green line is impacted. Therefore, it is fair to say that burn-up chart provides more granular information since it separates scope and progress. Burn-down chart, on the other hand, merges those two together, and it is less complex while conveying almost the same information. That is all you need to know about the burn-up chart. If you feel you do not need both burn-down and burn-up charts, you are very likely correct. Basically, 
both of them convey the same information in a different way. How is sprint progressing over time? In the next lesson, we will learn about sprint report, which is an extended version of the burndown chart and is likely the best option to track the sprint's progress and it is also a great sprint artifact to use as a reference during the sprint retrospective.